Hello, Internet. So today um, we're going to talk about pull-up resistors and how, yeah, we're gonna, we're, first we're going to, well, I mean, we're going to talk about pull-up resistors. We're also going to try and help uh, Orange, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I apologize, with his specific issue because as he like very rightfully points out, um, there is a lot of different uh, ways and it's, it's very long-winded to explain it, so I don't think a lot of people do, and it's confusing, and there's a lot of numbers, and there's a lot of tables, and there's a lot of, um, yeah, there's a lot of ugliness around. So we're going to try and simplify some of this and explain, go through the fundamentals of what is a pull-up resistor, and uh, what does it do, why do we have it, um, which how to select a temperature or a pull-up resistor for a specific application and how to wire it in, how to set it up in the cal like how to build the calibration, how to put the calibration into an EC master black. And then we'll kind of skip to the shortcut ways of the wizards. Um, so he has a wiring specialist harness, EC master black and an AEM um, 35213. I actually quite like these sensors. They use a DTM connector, which I think is pretty cool. Um, they're pretty reputable in my mind too. AEM and Haltech have been selling them for years and uh, AEM gives us data, which is great. If you are looking at buying a sensor from a questionable source or one that doesn't provide you with calibration data or one that you don't trust that the calibration data would be accurate, then just don't, don't buy that sensor. Buy one that you uh, can get all that from because... You can program your ECU to do amazing things, but it's only as good as the data it gets in. Um, so it has to be, you know, good data, and you gotta have good starting points to get good data. So the issue he's having is he doesn't get a value other than his lowest value in the table. Um, but what I can see that he did was he has the calibration data from the 2.2 or 2.2K, 2200 ohm, 2K2, whatever. Those are all the same way to say it. Um, 2200 ohm value. He has this column put into his software, his oil temp calibration, but he has a 4700 ohm pull up resistor enabled. Some brands have built in pull ups, some don't. EC Master gives you a 47 or 4. 4700 ohm. Um, I don't find that number to be a particularly useful one. Uh, most sensors should have different values in there. The so for this, mm, I don't want to jump too far ahead here. Let's start with what is a pull-up uh, resistor. I'll switch tabs here. So a pull-up resistor is essentially pulling the signal up to five volts this is a voltage dividing circuit is what that's called ecus don't measure resistance directly they measure um, voltage and the voltage change is based on resistance but those two things need to be calibrated together and they depend on what voltage you're putting into this uh, analog input um, there are Pins on the EC Master Black, and many other brands do this too, where the coolant temp input, if it's dedicated, and the air temp input, um, they will have pull-ups ready to go in there that you can enable in software, and then wiring them would look a lot easier, it'd look more like this. Um, the the pull-up is just internal to the ECU. It still needs one, it still has one, it's just internal to the ECU. So this is how you would wire it. You just splice this in on the not five volt side. The five volt is direct to the pull-up resistor. And then just remember this oil temp sensor is a, resi a resistor in its own and it changes with, uh, changes with temperature. So you'll have to splice that in there. So that's, that's the how to wire it in. Um, the next topic will be picking a pull-up resistor value. So just to use the table provided to us um, that he posted from AEM, um, we can see it's uh, they accurate up to 150 C for oil temp. If it's man, if it's getting up to 150 C, like you gotta you gotta get off track and let that thing cool down. But even just to point out too, the like so 2.5 K, it is 0.1 of a volt from 150 to 120 and that 30 C difference is going to be the difference between hey pull off the track to hey your motor is like breaking fluids down and uh, leaking and who knows what else happens when you consistently get your oil that hot so it's important to have this um, data as accurately as you can get it 
And it's also important to pick a pull-up value that puts it in a good place um, to get the most resolution. So shameless plug, I also sell temperature kits on, or sensor kits on my website. This is a Bosch liquid, Bosch Motorsports liquid temperature, and I have a resource page. I actually provide um, resistors with the, uh, with the sensors and a table for Celsius, a different table for Fahrenheit. We'll just zoom in on that a little quickly. So even here, we can see that um, we want the most resolution at the higher end of temperature. We're not really that concerned what it is at zero. It, you're not. In the case of coolant temp and air temp, it matters because that changes the calibration quite a bit. Oil temp, you are probably have safety parameters and logging purposes or maybe just driver display. Um, you really only care about what it is like near and at and above temperature. So I don't really care what it is below 60 C and, uh, everything below that matters to me less. So if I look at the 560 ohms or the thousand ohms column, those are the two I would recommend for, uh, choosing between, um, in the case of the 560, 140 C is 0.536 and hundred is like 1.252. So it's 0.7. Feel like, it feels like we're splitting hairs when I say that that's more resolution than using a higher one, but it is more resolution. It's uh, almost double what a 2.2K ohm would be. So depending on what you're going to use this temperature to measure and what um, degrees you think you're going to be in the region of and the degrees that you care about as well, that's uh, and how, do you, how do you make your selection. Like I said earlier, for air intake and temps and coolant temps, 2.2K is a pretty good value because it gives you a kind of a happy medium range all the way through. And those sensors will measure, I mean, depending on where you live, it'll measure zero or even colder. See and get up to ambient can be, I mean, on a turbo car, you can see 50 or 60 degrees C of uh, intake temperature, no problem if your intercooler is pretty bad and heat soaked. Um, Even another um, case is ECU Master themselves, or Wholesale Horsepower, I should say, the ECU Master USA, they sell a temperature sensor that uses a 330 ohm resistor, so even less value than what I would, um, or what I include with my kits. And they give you all the same data that AEM does. Um, this, in that case, would be a good sensor to buy, a reputable place to buy from. And, but yeah, they use a 330 and they only give you the pull-up value for a 330. So if you're going to use their sensor, be sure to use their pull-up resistor and not a random one on a different table or whatever you had laying around in your uh, wiring bin at home. Um, let's go over to this. This is a, this, so now we're going to talk about how to calculate a table. So in the case of um, Orange, he doesn't have that as an option in the sensor wizard or in the EC master um, black software that AEM sensor isn't there. So he's unfortunately going to have to go through the trouble of calculating it himself. And luckily for him, if he wanted to keep it without changing any wiring, um, guy Julian here said if necessary, so he actually did it. He recalculated it with a um, 4,700 ohm resistor. So you could take uh, the, that would be a different language, but you get it. Um, he could take the uh, he could take the voltage straight off this table and stick it into the EC Master software and be done. But I'd strongly recommend that he would do it properly and put a different sensor value in there. So to do that, you're going to take the number, the resistance on this table, and you're going to go over to this. Um, shout out to Chris at EC Master Tech Support who gave me this, uh, told me this existed a few years ago because I once knew, well, I probably still do, but I don't want to, I don't have to anymore. I used to know how to calculate this by hand. I no longer have to do that. Um, you can do this calculator and it do a lot of the lifting for you. So we're going to look at, um, the voltage will be your five volt input. R1 is your pull-up value. Let's pretend this is the analog input into the ECU. This is your sensor ground. This R2 would be your sensor, and then this R1 would be your pull-up. So we'll look at a thousand. Actually, let's look at a example from AEM's chart just to uh, just to make this a little nicer, and so you can see the how it works by validating data you have in front of you done by a professional. So. 5-volt input, as they even said, 5-volt resistor, um, S1, S2, S3, 2200 ohms. So if I throw 
28,136 into the temperature sensor. 4.637, 4.4, yeah, it's rounded up. That's So that's perfect. And we can do that um, a few more times. Let's do zero just for fun. Uh, 9319, 4.045, 4.0, yeah, there you go. Round up again, perfect. And let's do 100 just to keep the numbers um, simple. Lost there. 0 0.375, 0 0.368, 0 0.37. So that's all they did. They put it in a spreadsheet and they threw it on it. I mean, they knew what the, this was. Would you could measure that if you had a way of precisely heating the sensor and a um, ohmmeter hooked up to it, you could get those calibration piece points. The same, I mean, they probably used a higher grade tool than the average person, but I imagine that's all they did a hot plate and a, <laughs> an ohmmeter. So yeah, that's all they did. And uh, you just put this on paper onto a spreadsheet, um, which is literally all I did when I did the Bosch calibration because Bosch happens to supply this data um, with their sensors when you buy them. So you just take all this information, you stick it into uh, here and then you get out. And I, I did it for um, all four calibrations just in case anyone ever needed to use a different pull-up value. So that's how you calculate it. And then in the ECU software, so this is uh, analog inputs. So you can see you can actually disable, and it even tells you what the value is. You can disable them. We can choose between these two these options. I'm going one million ohm pull down is basically like not having uh, a pull, like there's nothing there that's such a high resistance. We're going to ignore pull down for now, and we're going to um, look at the. We've already talked about why this isn't a suitable number. And then you go to oil temp calibration. And I I, I did kind of, I cheated. I did this a little bit beforehand. So I threw the AM in as best as I could. And it's not 100% to the centigrade accurate because the numbers in this aren't exactly what they are on AEM's table as far as voltage goes. And I know with EC Master, if I edit this axis, it changes it for a bunch of other um, things and I, I don't want to modify multiple tables. Uh, that, yeah, don't want to modify multiple tables. So I'm going to leave this as 99% accurate in most cases. Um, and then that's basically it. You've chosen your pull up, you know what the sensor values are and that's all you have to do is stick it into the ECU box by box. Now, um, we're going to discuss the wizard aspect of it. So hypothetically, you bought an EC master oil temp sensor. You're going to change the oil temp calibration, your pull up value, which should be with the one that they gave you is going to be 330. And that will change, um, that gives you kind of a gist. Unfortunately, you can't just punch numbers into these with the sensor data you have. And in other softwares, the ADU, which we'll cover in a minute, you can, um, you can actually have this and spit it out. So if I hit that, it'll change here. So yeah, you can see that um, pretty 100C starts at 2.33 volts, and I mean, that's the end of the scale, but 223 is ends at 33, so that's that's quite a lot of resolution. That's actually pretty good. Um, but you can also see that it's really not linear. It's kind of linear in the middle, actually, and that's a pretty typical temperature voltage or temperature resistance coefficient um, thing for RTD sensors. So, but yeah, unfortunately for our example today, his sensor can't be found on here. So he has to do it the manual way. If you chose any of the, the usual stuff um, and even, so we'll do, let's do this. So 2200 ohm pull up gives you that. If we go to, let's put the same scenarios in at 2.6 oil temp and do, let's say a thousand. And why didn't that work? Bosch 2.6, oil temp calibration. There you go. Don't know what button I clicked wrong there. But anyway, so you can see pull up makes a pull up value, makes a big difference to calibration um, value or calibration itself. Um, and yeah. All right, so let's print fundamentally this is the same in all ECUs. Sometimes you get a nice graph to look at, sometimes you don't, whether it be on other platforms, Link, Haltech, 
max, whatever. Um, let, but let's look at this cubed in the family. Let's look at an ADU, because ADU PM will kind of be the same way. And uh, it is important that you have a later firmware for this, depending on a later software version, depending on uh, how long it's been since you've looked this up. But let's run the same example. Oil temp pin A1, sure. Switch uh, calibrated analog, default 1 million pull down sweep. Um, you can even pick, let's go temperature C. I like it in C. You can have your choice. I don't know who works in Kelvin, but somebody. Um, and then this wizard is actually pretty stinking good. I've ran this a few different times just to see what it does. So even if uh, I took temperature sensor and I go user defines, it's not one on there, 2200 on pull up, if that's what I was using. Um, and then I'll pull in, I have it on my other screen that you guys can't see, but I'm just going to take the data from uh, the AEM post and, oops, that's too many numbers, 316, and 100, 17, oops, 5. So if I take that, I didn't give it any other information, and I click OK. And then you compare all these to the table. It's actually pretty close. Um, and I assume 234 is the top end of the scale, but I'm going to go to keep going. Anyway, so yeah, that uh, that is how you do it on the ADU PMU. And you could, if you really were crafty, you could even use this and stick it right into your black and just use this software. Even if you don't own an ADU or PMU, just download the software. It's free. And use this as a guide to help you calculate um, what your pull-up values need to be if you have even less information to go on than uh, than three part than only three points or whatever. So yeah, that's kind of how to do it in there. Um, like I said, other brands are often pretty similar, at least as far as entering numbers in a table. And uh, yeah, hope that helps. Hope we all learn something. Um, if you have any other comments or questions, or if I didn't explain something well, uh, ask me in the comments. And uh, yeah, have a good one.